Tom here from Warren Systems, and we're going to talk about Cloudflare and their new family-friendly DNS filtering. If you want to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you would like to hire a short project, there's a hires button up at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's some affiliate links down below for products and services that we talk about this channel and get you some deals and discounts. Cloudflare. They've been doing DNS for a little while. They have a really cool service, and they've had their 111 for, well, a few years now, and it's worked really well. Now, I also, and one of the things they mentioned right here, they also just completed a privacy audit, and I think this is really important. They went through and had a third party come in and review their processes and how they do things, and it's a long public DNS privacy examination. Now, they did this because they have become kind of in the limelight due to the fact that Firefox chose them as a default provider for DOH, and I think that's really cool, and some people seem to think it's really controversial. You're giving too much control to one company, but they want to be very transparent and say that they're a good company to give it to, and they're being very open about how they do things, that they're not selling your data, etc., and they've let a third-party auditor come in and do this. Now, by the way, DNS is an optional thing. It's actually not like you are absolutely forced to use Cloudflare. There's no other providers. There's plenty of other providers out there, and for the most part, most people just use what the ISP gives them, so you're not like being defaulted into it with the exception of if you turn on DOH on Firefox, yes, it does default to Cloudflare, but completely changeable, not locked in, not restricted. You can use different providers. Anyways, back to the topic here. They've decided to update their 111 service into offering a family-friendly version, actually two versions. One is 111.2, the no malware version, and 111.3, no malware or adult content. Now, some people think this is a little bit controversial, but I think it's overall a good thing. And once again, it, DNS is something you generally have to update and choose. This isn't like this is being chose by default or not filtering sites by default out of the box. But I think a lot of people can agree there is a layers of protection and DNS has become a pretty important one, especially for home users. And I get a lot of questions on what are some simple things home users can do. And this is one of the easiest and simplest ones you can do. And we're gonna talk about it specifically how to implement it in PFSense. So 1112, no malware, what does that mean? So if a site has a indicator of compromise or known to be distributing malware, it gets in their list. Now, does that mean there will be false positives occasionally get in there? Completely a possibility. You could always just change DNF servers if you find something blocked that you don't think should be blocked. I mean, that is pretty straightforward to do. And if you're you know, if you're really worried about it, then don't use this. But I think it's a better layer of protection and I really recommend to a lot of home users and probably businesses should take a look at it as well, especially some of the smaller ones. If they don't have some of the other more advanced filtering systems set up, this is a, a pretty low level, easy way to do it and adds an extra layer. Now, 1113, no malware or adult content. I think this is particularly good because this solves a problem that I get challenged with a lot when, you know, people I know that just want to protect their kids and go, hey, I got a small child. I want them to be able to go on the internet, but I'm afraid they might type in the wrong website or find the wrong thing. Well, the no malware, no adult content night is pretty nice because you can set it on a per computer basis inside your home. And I'm going to show you how to do that with a DHCP reservation. So now, yes, you're able to filter that one particular computer and reduce the likelihood, adding another layer that they will stumble upon a site they shouldn't. And someone already pointed out, well, they can and just change a DNS server. Yes, I know teenagers are clever and this is probably not the best defense against a clever teenager determined to get on websites you do not want them on. Uh, that requires a whole nother level of supervision. Sorry, Cloudflare won't be a parent for you. Anyways, I won't lie though. Uh, I am aware and I have this link pulled up over here from the register, which I love their snark, um, but I think they're going over the top here with Cloudflare. Uh, Cloudflare family-friendly DNS server flubs filtering for a, you know, I love their uh, iterations here, for a biz that prides itself on not censoring the internet, it sure looks like they're censoring the internet. Now, yes, they have already made mistakes. Shocker, right? A company launched a new product and there was a problem with it. It filtered a site that shouldn't have been filtered. Uh, that's fine. This is the response that from the CEO himself, dumb mistake on our part, we are fixing immediately. If you have suggestions on how we can make it better, let us know. What more can you ask for? A CEO getting on Twitter and actually not only fixing it, saying how do we make it better and asking for the crowd's help. Filtering websites is a challenge that is amazing. When you think about the number of websites and what is or isn't categorized, this becomes very challenging. Once again, DNS is an optional thing. It's not like you're being forced into that and they're trying to break the internet like the uh, being implied almost at the register. Either way, I'm aware of these articles, so let's jump into actually what to do and how to configure it. First, I set it up on mine because this came out on April 1st and it is now April 5th. I used it for a couple days because the announcement I didn't feel like doing a video about, I wanted to actually turn it on and see what happened. 
nothing. Uh, it works perfectly fine. I haven't found a site I couldn't go to. I couldn't find any of my workflows that couldn't be done. I just use the 1112 and 1002 for filtering this, but specifically filtering it just for the no malware one. So I put this inside of my general setup of PSNs, and that was easy enough to do. You just change these two settings right here, whatever you may have had in there, um, and make sure that you're not overriding it with whatever your ISP gives you, which I never do anyway. So I was actually using Cloudflare and Quad9 prior to my switching. I can't distinguish any difference. Everything at my house works perfectly fine for the last several days. Go over to my DHCP server. How do you specifically go to one computer and do it? Well, you could mainly set up the computer and change the DNS entry to the computer. That would be tedious. I'd rather do it right here. And we're gonna go to my Marcus Gaming desktop. I went into his DHCP reservation that I have set and I changed his to 1113. Uh, my son is at an age where maybe he would look things up and maybe he will be able to figure out how to bypass it. But either way, I have put the block in here to stop it from working. What I did was set his DNS server to equal this and I've remoted back into my home. And uh, here we go. Here is the DNS server. 192.168.1.1 is the default gateway. And then we're forcing it to give this out as a DNS server. Now, normally PFSense will give itself as a DNS server. Uh, so now with the DNS queries are not passing through my PFSense, which could you know, obviously bypass some of the uh, PF blocker settings I have in there, but I'm throwing it out there that if you wanted to narrow it down to one specific computer, you could do that. I could also alternate the secondary DNS server to be 192.168.1.1, but I wanted to try it with the 113 because I know not everyone's running a more advanced system like PF blocker, which has better abilities for more filtering. And I got separate videos on that. But from the standpoint of usability, the games play fine. Uh, someone claimed to me that I got a message that was blocking YouTube. I so far haven't seen that happen. Um, we can pull YouTube right up on his computer and it works perfectly fine. We can go back over here too. And actually I should probably put this in color. If you're wondering when we do the remote, uh, I change things not to color so it loads faster. You see how it takes a little bit longer to draw the color. All right, so what I'm gonna show you here is if we do a dig, which is a DNS records lookup at 1.1.1.1, and we're gonna look up uh, youtube.com, and it returns the YouTube's IP address right here, 172.217.8.206. If we change this to a two, we get the same answer, and we change it to a three, we get the same answer. But let's start it having it as a one, and look up another site. And what we're doing is we're querying Cloudflare about this website. It gives us an IP address. It gives us the same IP address. But we go here to dot three, the family friendly one, and it gives us no IP address. So pretty straightforward how they're doing it. Simple DNS filter. Uh, and if you're ever curious if a site is blocked, if you happen to globally set your DNS to this and suddenly the site you're looking for doesn't work, uh, on Windows it's NS Lookup, but you can also you know do other lookup tools and Linux, obviously it's Dig is the easiest one to use, but you can dig into this and figure out if there's a site that you want that is blocked. You can always just switch your DNS versions back if you're having a problem. And Cloudflare seems to be open to addressing issues that get found or miscategorized site. So overall, I think this is a really good thing that Cloudflare is doing. I'm going to offer it to a lot of my you know, home user friends who are looking for really simple ways to just put filtering on some of the uh, desktops. Just go in there and either manually set the DNS on that particular computer, create a DHCP reservation. Obviously, PFSense makes this really easy. There's other firewalls that do this as well, where you can specify the DNS or just overall specify the DNS to be pushed out to everyone. But eh, maybe there's some sites that other uh, adults in the family would like to get to. So maybe filtering all of them may or may not be practical. Depends on your use case, something to think about. But um, that's it. That's my thoughts on Cloudflare's family friendly DNS. It's a positive thing. It's a good thing. I like the fact that they're filtering malware. That is something that really every home user and maybe even businesses should consider doing, but a lot of the uh, businesses are using uh, DNS systems that do offer this commercially, and it's a pretty popular way to do it. Uh, Umbrella is one of the ones that come uh, to mind. Cisco's Umbrella, they've been filtering malware and things like that for a while. Uh, DNS filtering is pretty popular, and a reason why, and I've talked about this before, when you try to do constant diving into it, certificate level filtering, where you wanna play man in the middle with everything, when some corporate firewalls do set this up with proxies, uh, but it becomes very difficult and challenging to manage. A DNS is one of those catch-alls that does a pretty good job and it's a good layer to have in your security stack uh, for filtering things. All right, and I'll leave a link to the announcement on Cloudflare and that's about it, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. 
If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.